At some point in your time playing Star Citizen, you will no doubt incur the wrath of the local bobbies or bounty hunters such as myself, sending you face first into the nearest Clesher Rehabilitation Facility. There are three ways you can get back out into the verse and recommence your nefarious deeds. The first is to simply wait out your sentence. If there's only 15 minutes to go, make a cup of tea, maybe grab a scone and just let it tick down. Assuming you want out now, however, then you can either earn your way out or escape. We will be covering the latter in this video, with a video detailing earning your way out linked in the top right and in the description. With all that covered, I'm Sean from Wee Small Band, now grab your towel and join me for the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Verse. Before I go through how to escape, I should mention a couple of things that you need to be aware of. The first is that you need someone on the other end to pick you up. If they use a ship roughly cutlass sized or smaller, and it has a ramp, then you can simply jump in at the exit. If they have a larger vehicle however, then you will need to steal a rover and meet them. The next thing is that if you escape, you will not have your equipment returned to you. This is not an issue currently, but with the plans laid out by CIG for physicalized, well, everything, it may well be an issue in the future. Finally, is that if you do escape, you will immediately be issued a bounty, meaning you need to quickly work to erase your criminal record. We hunters have a phrase for prison escapees. Easy payday. Upon waking in prison, you will find yourself in a small hab pod in one of four blocks. Proceed out of your pod and make your way to the central area. If you're on an upper floor, you can simply jump the railings if you're feeling brave, thanks to the low gravity here on Aberdeen. Now you want to identify the mines. Look around the room and you will see that each hab area is marked with a number, ranging from 1 to 4. You're looking for 2 or 3, with the mines being set between them. Make your way down the corridor, and as you pass through the tarps, look to your right. Turn off your torch if it's on, and look through the windows, where there will be a code on the monitor at the back, which you will need to note down. If you can't see it, zoom in by holding F, then scrolling the mouse wheel. Now, make your way to hab 1, and go up to the first floor. Give yourself about 5 yards and line yourself up with the right side of the large fan before taking a sprinting jump over. Once you land, move to the keypad in front of the fan and enter the code that you noted by holding the F key and left clicking the relevant numbers. Wait for the fan to stop, then proceed through. You will come to a pit which you can jump over, however if you prefer to play it safe then you can just walk around the edge. Throughout the cave, you will see these blue plants and glow sticks, as well as chalk arrows. These act as a sort of guidepost, so try to keep an eye out for them. Crouch down by pressing control and make your way into the cave, jumping up the first ledge. When you reach this hole, simply fall down. You can fall to the bottom with minimal damage, so don't worry about trying to hit every little outcrop on the way down. Head through the only exit in this room. Proceed through, and at the first fork, turn left. You're going to come to a jumping puzzle now. Jump over the first block, turn 90 degrees to the right, jump again, then turn back on yourself and jump over the first block into this corridor. Turn left at the first fork, and then turn right and look up. To your right will be a ledge that you can climb up. Proceed forward after climbing until you reach another block. Make sure that you move around to the left side, then jump over. Turn left, jump the next block, then crouch and go through the cave on your right. If you look to your right, you will see that there's another ledge that you can climb up. Climb this and then proceed to the next ledge, watching out for this hole on the right, as it's easy to catch. Climb the ledge in front of you, then turn around, and you will see another ledge across from you, which you need to jump to. Take a bit of a step back, and then take a running jump, making sure that you jump at the last moment. Turn around again and you will see another ledge. Do the same as before. Climb the three ledges, then proceed to the fork. You want to go right here. This next section is linear with just some ledges to climb, so I'll speed up the footage. Eventually, you will reach a drop. You want to jump this, but avoid sprinting as you may bounce off the wall opposite and fall into a pit of doom. Turn around, 
back up and then take a running jump to the ledge just below where you jumped from, following it around and jumping down. There's a small ledge in front of you. Do not sprint this jump, as you will just overshoot and fall into the moor. Look left and you'll see another ledge with some scrap metal. Take a running jump to this, ensuring that you jump at the very last moment. Stand on the metal plate and look across the chasm where you will see some blue plants. Again, take a run up and jump at the last second. Turn to your left and you will see a small ledge. Jump to this. Climb the ledge on the right, then the tall ledge and proceed through the cave on your right. Once you see the scrap metal, make a small jump onto it. Walk to the top and look left, where you will see a platform with a large pile of metal. Start to run, but jump nice and early to get across. Turn around and look across to the next pile of metal. Make sure you are on the left side of the scrap that you are standing on to ensure enough space, then take a run and jump at the very last moment. Climb the four ledges to the left, then turn around. Line yourself up with the metal plate across the gap and take a running jump. Climb the two ledges, then proceed through the cave, turning right at the fork. Make a small jump to the next ledge, which is marked with a chalk arrow. Move through this short section and you will see a dead body in front of you, which you want to make a running jump over to. You can interact with this body for some flavour text if you're curious. Climb these two ledges, then walk along the metal bridge up to the next ledge. To the right, you'll find a cave hidden away which you want to go through. Be careful of the pitfall as you come around this left turn. You'll see some scrap in front of you. Come to the left for some clearance and then take a running jump onto it. There's another searchable body if you're interested. Turn around then climb the ledge on your right, before following the cave around to the next jump. This is one of the ones most likely to catch players out. Make sure you line yourself up with the left side of the jump, aiming for the outcrop. This is also probably the gap where jumping at the last second is the most important. Look to your right and back up carefully, then take a running jump to the next platform. You can make it to the right side, but the left is easier. Proceed forward, then carefully drop down on the left side. Jump over the crate, and then as you pass the maintenance room on the left, check the monitor through the window. There will be two codes here, one for each of the rover bays. Unless your friend is already waiting to collect you in a small vessel, it's highly recommended that you note these down. The environment of Aberdeen is unforgiving, and you will quickly succumb without shelter and oxygen that the rovers provide. Duck under the bar, and then follow the walkway. Crouch to walk through the crawl space, then I'd recommend standing back up to jump onto the ledge to avoid… weirdness. Move forward, then crouch to get through the gap. You may have to wiggle a bit here to make it work. Drop down, and if you have a friend waiting, then it is here that you can simply jump into their ship and fly away to freedom. If not, then move left around the giant pit to the stairs. This first staircase has a broken step, and this is a serious pain in the ass. Jumping whilst already walking has a good chance of simply launching you into the gap rather than over it due to the character's animations, forcing you to start back in prison. I find that standing below it and pressing W and space at the same time is best. Keep following the stairs, passing another dead body. They really need to get a clean up crew out here. Watching for another broken step on the fourth staircase. Turn right and head up the crates on your left. Walk up these slowly, I've seen a lot of people yeet themselves to their doom, and make a small jump onto the canopy. Look to your left and climb the pipework and make your way towards the end before jumping over. 
congratulations, you're free. Except you only have 10 minutes before you're boiled alive, and I'm on my way to put you back where you belong. So, make your way around to the opposite side of the pit, to the yellow bunker. In the corner, you will find a keypad. If, like in the footage, it has a number on it, just spam the zero to reset. Enter the code, and then open the door and ramp. Climb into the rover, and breathe a sigh of relief that you're no longer being turned into a Sunday roast. Now, just drive to freedom. As a side note, if the rover in this bay is gone, there is another rover bay, which can be found by walking along the surface with the prison to your left. And that covers everything. Leave any thoughts and questions down below. Is there anything else you'd like to see covered? And we'll catch you all next time.